In this problem, we're told a small rock is thrown vertically upward with a speed of 22 meters per second from the edge of a roof of a 30 meter tall building. The rock doesn't hit the building on its way back down and lands on the street below. Ignore air resistance. A. What is the speed of the rock just before it hits the street? B. How much time elapses from when the rock is thrown until it hits the street? So let's draw what's going on here. Always start with a diagram. So we have this building, right? 30 meter tall building and a rock is being thrown off of it. So 30 meters tall and we have this rock right small rock and it's going to be thrown upwards right at with a speed of 22 meters per second so v sub 0 is going to be equal to 22 meters per second so this rock is going to be thrown up right and then it's going to fall back down like this right and it's going to hit the ground and so that's going to be the drawing let's go ahead and write down what we're given so what are we given so they write it they write off the bat tell us uh, V sub zero, the initial velocity, is going to be equal to 22 meters per second. So you just want to write out all your variables. It just makes it easier to solve. We know also know the change in y, delta y, right, of our rock is going to be minus 30 meters. And so the reason we know that is it starts at 30 right here, right? And then it's going to end down here at zero. So if we do delta y is your final position, or your final in the y direction, minus your initial. So essentially zero minus your starting point, which is 30, right? So 0 minus 30 is just minus 30. So that's going to be that. And we also know whenever you do a free fall problem like this, when you're ignoring air resistance, you're going to assume the acceleration is minus 9.8 meters per second squared because this is the force of gravity acting on the ball, right? So acceleration. And so keep in mind, we're going to start with uh, A. So A is asking for the speed of the rock just before it hits the ground. And so that's just going to be the uh, final velocity, which we just denote as V. So V equals question mark because that's what we're finding. So we have all our variables laid out. Let's go ahead and solve. So the equation that you're going to want to use is if you look at our variables, notice these are the kinematic equations. And so if you notice 1 through 3 all contain T. And so we don't have T yet. So we're not going to use the, any of these. So we're not using this one, this one, or this one. We're going to be using the fourth one here to solve. So and just keep in mind this is delta X. In reality, you can use it as delta X or delta Y. And we're using y in this case since it's going to be free fall. So use this formula, v squared equals v sub 0 squared plus 2a times delta x. So all we have to do is plug in and solve for v, right? Because that's what we're trying to find, the velocity as it hits the ground. So v squared equals the initial velocity squared, which is 22 squared plus 2 times a, which is minus 9.8 times our change in x. I was supposed to write change in y, my bad because we're focusing on the y direction. Uh, that's my bad, but delta y we know is minus 30. So if you go ahead and do this, uh, v is going to be equal to the square root of all this, right? Because we have this squared. So this whole thing squared, so 22 squared plus 2 times minus 9.8 times minus 30. So if you go ahead and do this, you square root this whole thing right here, 22 squared plus 2 times minus 9.8 times minus 30. You're going to get that v equals... 32.74 and so on. I'm just going to go around, go ahead and round to this 32.7. So this is going to be your velocity, right? So V equals 32.7. Keep in mind our units. Uh, it's going to be meters per second, right? Because we're using meters and seconds here. So the final velocity or your answer to A is going to be 32.7 meters per second. So now, now let's go ahead and move on to B. So B. So B is going to be how much time elapses from when the rock is thrown until it hits the street. So we're trying to find how much time passes from uh, for it to travel this whole distance here. So we're trying to find T. So T equals question mark. So we can use many of the equations here. We can use any of these that solve for T, except for this one, right? Because this one doesn't contain T. I'm going to go ahead and choose this one right here because I think it's the easiest. So V equals V sub 0 plus A times T. So we just have to plug in. Notice how we just got V, right? So I'm just going to plug in this version, 32.7. You can plug in the more rounded version if you want. But 32.7 equals V sub 0, which is 22, plus A, which is minus 9.8. So it's just going to be minus times T. So we're solving for T. If you minus 22 from both sides, you're going to get minus 54.7 equals minus 9.8 t 
and divide both sides by minus my 9.8 to get t. You're going to get that t equals 5.581 and so on. I'm going to round to the hundredth, hundredth place here, so 5.58. And then keep in mind our units. This is time, so we measure it in a time, right? So it's going to be seconds because we're using seconds here. So 5.58 seconds is going to be your answer to b. And so, yeah, hopefully you found this video useful.